Hello everyone, it's Dio from Firm But Fair Gaming bringing you another Diablo 3 video. Today we're going to talk about the support bar for rat runs. So rat runs of course are when you have, it's a four man group uh, with the objective to clear a greater rift in under three minutes, more specifically two and a half minutes or less. And the build consists of three necromancers and one barb. One necromancer is a Zenek. Uh, his job is to keep everything frozen and crit cap them, while the other two necromancers in Season 22, one could be a Bone Spear, the other one is the Rat, which is uses Legacy of Dreams with Skeletal Mages. They kill everything uh, while the support barb is there, and basically he adds movement speed, survivability with his shouts, and he runs pickup radios to pick up health globes, as well as the globes that uh, spawn when they kill elites for the progression. He also is there just in case he runs NEMS, just in case the Zenek is busy with another pack of elites and he'll click the pylon in order to generate another elite as well as to use the pylon just to help the run run quickly. After all, we the objective of a rat run is to do it in under three minutes, more specifically probably closer to two minutes depending on the group. Some will let you get away with being closer to three, but really... Most groups run two and a half minutes or less. So you're doing the maximum number of greater rifts that you can do, the max level, in two and a half minutes or less. So in an hour, you should be doing between 15 and 20 greater rifts. You also need to minimize your time in town as well as looting. So basically, you'll go and you'll do two runs and then you'll uh, empty inventory and then you'll go again. So it's a really fast pace. And if you're doing less than 15 per hour either spending too much time in town or you're doing too high of rift and you got to drop the difficulty so it's just a quick cap there so the build that i use um, for this is as follows so i am running uh two-piece savages so i'm using the shoulders and the chest um, so what this does is it doubles the effect of your shouts so this uh, helps with when you the falter as well as uh war cry and and whatnot as well as i also run um i run two piece of the king's destiny so this is to add the uh, xp so at fit at level 70 is five percent so this is the xp i real run because you're doing so many riffs it's every little bit counts um so this is definitely like a paragon build to help generate more paragon so I have that for the extra 5%, as well as, as you, in my uh, weapon, I run a jump of ease. But I'm jumping a little bit all over, so I'll just get back on track. So I run two pieces of that. Um, for non-set items in my crown, I'm running Leorix uh, for cooldown reduction. And then I am also running, so this uh, Rondo's Locket. So the reason I'm running this is because of the pickup radius. The secondary stat on this uh, neck is... Uh, as we can see here, is increase the gold and health pickup by four yards. This is actually a bad roll on it. I should have six, but I haven't found one yet. Uh, so you run that because you want your maximum pickup range on the barbs so that they can grab all the health globes and the other orbs that drop um, without having to run over to it because the globes, the health globes give essence to the necros so they can keep summoning mages and keep getting them out for more DPS and so they can quickly progress through the rift. I am running NEMS, so on all my pieces, I am trying to have uh, the plus globe pickup. So here on my bracers, I actually have plus two. So you want to try to have max. I am rocking, so if I go down here, I'm rocking 23. That's actually not that great. It should be closer to 27, but it's still pretty good. Like, it's good. I don't... you. The difference between 23 and 27s is slightly noticeable, but with my positioning and just my play style, I'm able to compensate. On my for the belt, I'm running Chillix Chain. So this is a, when you use Warcry, it increases movement speed by 40%. Uh, so because you want to use this, because again, the idea is to move quickly. So you want to go through on, on bad floors where there's not a lot of mobs or it leads to kill. You want to progress as quickly as possible and move as fast as possible. So that's why we're using that. Uh, Oculus rings, I'm using this so that you can, you know, you proc the Oculus ring, the DPS can stand at it. When you summon a mage and you're standing in the ring, it does twice as much. Same as when you're throwing bone spears. Uh, so you want to have that. And I have an 81% roll. 
Ideally, you'd want to try to find an 85. I just don't have one on this build. Um, the pants is the other piece of the cane set. I'm using the Ring of the Zodiac. So this is to keep my cooldowns off so I can you know, keep using my shouts as often as possible, as well as I have uh, down here, I have Sprint with Force Mash. So again, for increased movement speeds, so you want it off CD as much as possible. And then I'm using Wreath of Lightning just to tag things and uh, the increased movement speed as well. So that's why I'm using that one. For the weapon, I am using NGM. So this is every time that uh, the Necros kill an elite, all my cooldowns get reset. And so then I can instantly pop a uh, sprint so we can start, you know, run away really quickly onto the next set, as well as I can pop all my shouts again and uh, just so we can move so quick through the instance. For boots, I'm using illusionary boots so I can just move unhindered through enemies so I don't have to worry about that. So I can just keep charging, charging, charging. And if I'm out of charges, then I can just run through them. It's not really a big issue. And then for my offhand, I'm using Echoing Fury. Uh, so this is because mobs are dying so quick. You just get the extra the speed, the extra frenzy charges. So it's just pretty useful there. And then I'm only running one life on hit here. here. Um, this build is really tanky. You should never die because you're moving so quick if you do die it's probably because you stood in fire or an explosion when and you shouldn't have been there anyways so those are the items i i use and as i was saying you should try to stack um the pickup radius on it so i'm at 23 so you can get pickup radius on pretty much everything minus the weapons so that's what you should be aiming for the gems are gogok uh wreath of lightning and the gem of the toxin gem. So this is just a little bit of damage output. Um, really your role is not, you just there to add survivability and help them move quickly. For the actual, uh, for the cube, we're using uh, Measure Smith's Reaver. So anytime something dies, uh, your cooldown is reduced by one second. So again, that just helps keep everything off CD so you can help the group move. We have Pride of Cassius for Ignore Pain, so that the Necros, so the, the Bone Spear is, is tanky, but the Rat Necro is actually pretty squishy, so this is helpful for them, so they really need that up at all times. So with the increased duration, it just maximizes it. And with NGM and everything else, this should always be up and it should always be on the Rats. Um, and also when you're going through the instance, you're like their, you're their buddy, their partner, you're standing on top of them, you don't go ahead of them, you stay with them. And if some of them falls behind, you're right there beside them. Keep giving them move speed and keep giving them ignore pain and all the shouts to make sure that they live. I'm using Band of Might as well, so that anytime I stomp or anytime I charge around or whatever, uh, then I'm get my 80% damage reduction. Again, you should never die while doing this. If you do, you then you charge into an explosion and and well, and that's that. And then I'm also using strong arms to give the extra 30% damage. This helps the, the rats just blow everything up. So that's pretty handy. For my actual uh, skills, I'm using leap. So this is for a rarely cast. This is just if you end up in like barracks or one of the, the maps where there's lights, lots of walls and all that sort of stuff. Like the rats can blink through same with the Z neck and you would have to run around. So you use leap because you can jump over top. So that just helps you keep up with them. And then you can start charging again and, and you, you don't lose sight of them and you, they don't have to wait for you or anything like that. I'm using a uh, ferocious charge with a merciless assault. So this basically I can charge unlimited as any time with the merciless assault, uh, rune on it. Anytime I hit, an enemy reduces the charge by two seconds. So I'm always going to hit somebody so I can just charge endlessly through the map and keep up with the rats who can blink. They usually run two charges. And so they're just blinking, blinking, blinking. So this helps me keep up and I never get left behind. I'm also running force March uh, here, the sprint with force March. So this is to increase the move speed as for myself and for the rats. Again, like I said earlier, this is just to help us move as quickly as possible through the rift get to those elites, blow them up, and just onto the next set, onto the next set, onto the next set. So I, when NGM, when an elite dies, I'm popping this instantly. It's 90% of the time, it's always available. So you're just hitting it anytime it's up, anytime it's up, you're just hitting it, hitting it, hitting it. 
keeping the move speed up so everybody can just keep flying forward. This is standard on all support barbs who are running Threatening Shell with Falter. This just makes enemies take more damage. And again, with our uh, set pieces, it makes it take twice as much. So this, we're just popping it as, a, as well anytime we run into an elite. So we're just popping that as we go through. Basically, you're, you're just mashing your buttons all the way through. Anytime these things come off CD, you're just going to pop them. Another uh, standard is Ignore Pain with Mob Rule. So this is to reduce all damage taken and they gain immunity to all control impairing effects. So again, we're just popping this whenever it's up. Keep the, the rats alive. They have to survive. If a rat goes down, it can be pretty catastrophic to the run, um, especially if they run out of essence or their sims are down or anything like that. And then they can't resummon mages and it's just a bad, bad time if they die. So this keeps them alive often. Then of course we're running veterans warning or war cry with veterans warning. So this increases uh, all armor and all that sort of stuff. It's the, it's the big uh, survivability buff as well. So ignore pain helps them make them immune from uh, control effects and gives them some damage reduction. And this is where they get a lot of the toughness that helps them. Some rats don't rock a stuff in life and this is why it enables them to do so. Then for our passive skills, we're rocking uh, nerves of steel. So this is just in case we take fatal damage, uh, which should not happen. Uh, so the, if this ever procs, um, which should never really happen, you should never die, then you know you just have to be careful for the next 60 seconds. So basically, if you stand in an explosion once, you got 60 seconds not to make the same mistake. Inspiring presence, so this just doubles the duration of our shouts. Um, so this is pretty standard on support barbs, as well as it adds some life regen. Relentless, uh, so if we ever do fall below, all our skills costs are reduced. Um, this is just in case, so it's pretty standard on a support bar build. And then Pound of Flesh, so when you're healed by Olive Globe, you gain life regen and increase move speed. This just helps us move quick through the instance as well as to keep up with everybody else. So that's a quick uh, tutorial of the support bar build. It is a lot of fun to play. Like I said, when you're in a group, you're doing between 15 to 20 rifts in an hour, which is pretty good. You get a lot of gear, you get a lot of gem levels. So in a in a typical group or a good group where you can run the 20 an hour, you're taking a gem from level zero to level 100. So it's great to for augments to get that up for your gear as a base. So at the start of a season, this is very popular among the hardcore players. So they'll be doing rats all the time, eight hours a day or or so and I'm not a big rat guy but I do enjoy it so at the start of a season I'll probably do a couple hours a day doing it get my gems up it's it's great for Paragon as well at the early levels at the start of a season uh, most rat groups are doing start around 100 105s and they slowly progress and right at the moment in season 22 the rat groups are now doing 127s or more the high-end ones anyway and of course this is having players in there with Paragon around 6,000 uh, where the rats are just absolutely insane. So like I said, overall, it's a fun build. It's a good time. It's fun to just charge around. You just move so quick. Your role is just to keep survivability on the group, pick up Hulk lobes and the other orbs as they spawn. With your pickup radius that you rock into your set, it, you almost pick them up instantaneously. So you're just charging, charging, charging. Um, don't leave a rat behind. Never leave a man behind. If one dies, make sure to go back and pick them up. And that's pretty much the build, and that's all there is to it. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments, and have a great day.